The Loop Mill has been in existence under various corporations since uh, 1888 and has been a strong economic engine for the Western Maryland region for, for that amount of time. It's a way of life for the people. It's a job that you can get, that you can buy a house, you can buy a car, you can raise your family. You couldn't ask for a better place. This mill basically raised me uh, and coming around to my uh, part of life, I've actually raised three daughters, uh, three college educations. I think of all the prom dresses that this place <laughs> paid for. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been a great place to work. Uh, we are known for coded one side sheet C1S. We're always told that that C1S sheet is uh, probably the number one sheet produced in the world. I take a lot of pride at here we are in this little country setting with a paper mill that can provide the best paper in the world. The pulp and paper industry is what we call an energy intensive industry. And so anything they can do to increase their efficiency and to be more globally competitive is really, really key. Wood is basically composed of two parts. There's a fiber component and then there's a component that's called lignin. Uh, the lignin is no good for paper making it, but what we do is when we cook the wood, we remove this lignin and the lignin is in a liquid form which we call black liquor. And we take that black liquor and we concentrate it, evaporate it, or it can be burned in our recovery boilers. When we burn the black liquor, we're actually creating steam we use it in our processing, and also we also use the steam to run our generators. We have two of our own generators to make electricity, which we sell back on the grid and we have any excess. The renewable energy standard, and we'll use the state of Maryland as an example, creates a market, and the market is called the Renewable Energy Credit Market, or REC. If you are a producer of renewable energy, you can sell into this market as long as you are selling energy onto the grid. And pulp and paper facilities who have any, any, any extra energy left over can sell this energy onto the grid and access this renewable energy credit market and access a stream of revenue that um, they otherwise wouldn't be able to. When you are sourcing biomass from sustainably managed forests, then you use that biomass to create energy. You are creating what we call a carbon neutrality cycle. Trees, they sequester carbon. That carbon lives in that wood. You're using that wood to create energy and you're replanting trees to then sequester that carbon again. So it becomes a carbon loop, a carbon cycle. What we're seeing at the state level is, you know, some in the environmental community don't believe that black liquor has a role in renewable energy standards. We know legislation is going to be introduced to uh, rewrite Tier 1. Uh, basically, uh, they want, uh, the bill is going to propose to keep just strictly wind and solar. Now, just so we'll know, we support wind and solar, but we think that you, know, you have to have a diversified range of different type of energies. Um, wind, solar, biomass, uh, even waste to energy facilities, we think are all viable uh, ways to address environmental concerns and also provide good paying jobs for workers. It has a terrible name, black liquor. What we know is that it's actually good, and it's a good byproduct that can be used to generate clean energy and help to maintain efficiencies at pulp and paper facilities that reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, that help states to really meet their clean energy goals. So the removal of that black liquor from Tier 1 certainly would put those jobs in jeopardy. If this mill wasn't here, there would be a, a giant void. Uh, everything about it touches an awful, awful lot of people.